It's a beautiful day in the game of hell. A beautiful day for my gamers. Would you be one? Could you be one? It's out of that thunder, but don't despair. This colony's breeding great robbers. Would you be one? Could you be one? If the native was immortality, where it works for you. For a few bucks a month, you can sign up and have the hard skill you. So let's make the most of another someday. Brew up some coffee and play it my way. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my gamers? Won't you be? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my gamers? All right, all right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mr. Hobbs' Gamerhood. I'm your host, Jason Hobbs. And tonight, we're going to be playing Low Fantasy Gaming which might be a little confusing since for the last couple of Wednesdays we've been playing Tales of Argosa, which is a low fantasy gaming second edition. But one of the players in that campaign, I won't name any initials, but his, uh, I mean, I won't name any names, but his initials are Stu, is absent without leave. So I'm going to give his address later and I'd like everyone to send him a bag of poop. Um, that's what happens, Levi, when you're absent without leave at the Gamerhood, just so you know. Uh, just kidding about that. I think. Uh, so anyway, Low Fantasy Gaming, we're doing vignette number nine. And as I always say, you can't have a game without players. So why don't you introduce yourself and maybe say something about your character, Robert? Hey, everybody. I'm Robert. I'm playing Vignal. He is the Varnari Barbarian. That's you. If you've watched any of these, you probably have seen some of those because uh, we've done eight of them. Right, all of the, the those eight have included him. Is that right? I think one of them might not have. Okay, and uh, tonight he is going to be a little bit later in his career. Everything else we've done has been first level for Vignal. Now he's up to third on this one, so jumping around sort of like uh, Conan stories from Robert E. Howard. Hey, sometimes you got to be inspired by the best, brother. All right, you saw how that worked out. Levi, you want to introduce yourself and your character? Yeah, um, I'm Levi. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm playing Kalam, and he is a Port Brax street rat. Um, he is um, right at the beginning of his career, so he's kind of a, a juxtaposition with uh, with Robert's character. Um, if you've ever seen Conan the Destroyer, he is a lot like uh, the thief. Yeah, the rogue character in, in that movie, He's, uh, he borrows a little bit from that as, as far as appearance goes and, and attitude. Um, when uh, when the chips are down, though, he's he's he's, he's in it to win it. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens. All right. So what Levi doesn't know is I actually made his character third level as well. So he's actually been around doing some stuff, and uh, and you guys didn't know this because I didn't tell you up front, but I think that maybe. Uh, uh, Kalam and Vignal have been uh, hanging around uh, for a little while and have this is uh, later in Vignal's career and he's left Northgate and since we're going to talk about some actual stuff we'll head over to the tabletop. This is a map of Northgate I got here showing. I don't. What I'm going to do is bring up the uh, sweet ass uh, Randy M map oh i gotta move you guys over though and tell you a little bit about the midlands you don't really need to know a ton but maybe this will help you get into the mood a little bit all right so like i say randy m made this map it's very very nice uh the midlands is really these surviving uh cities northgate port brax northgate port brax and crow's keep so port brax is here northgate is here these squares, I don't even know what they are. Maybe 80 miles a square or something like that. I'm not sure. But the actual story that we're going to tell uh, starts uh, not far from Port Brax. And uh, in Port Brax, uh, Kalam and possibly Vignal have been involved with... Uh, it's known for its uh, thieves' guilds and gangs in Port Brax. Um, it's also, I think, the most um, profitable of the three cities of Argosa or the Midlands. And this is a really mostly human-centric uh, setting. And it's low fantasy because we're playing low fantasy gaming deluxe. And 
I'm as soon as Levi said he wanted to play a Malik type character to Vignal being Conan, I thought that we would take the beginning of Conan the Destroyer, and that's where we would begin the game tonight. So we're actually in like a desert area in the low plains, not you know, within a week or two of Port Brax. So as you guys all know, I am all about some sweet uh, maps and tokens and stuff like that. So in the beginning of Conan the Destroyer, after a weird kind of uh, scene where they're saying all the people's names and everything, and you can see, like, it looks almost like the Jotuns from Car Conan the Barbarian, but you do notice Wilt Chamberlain riding amongst the dudes. They're riding, and they're pulling this cart, and they actually end up on this uh, area of almost a desert with these buttes, and we find uh, Conan uh, on one knee holding onto his sword in front of, like, a low stone table almost like an altar, and he seems, strangely enough, to be praying. Now, Vignal doesn't have to be praying, but you can come up with why. Uh, and nearby, we uh, see Malak, or in this situation, Callum, uh, counting out small gems and biting coins out of a pouch. You guys remember this at all? Yep. Yeah, this tracks. <laughs> all right, all right. And so uh, as they're sitting there, we hear... That uh, Malik or Callum says, you know, do you think the merchant's mad? We didn't take all of his money. And that's right after he sees some horsemen uh, come up. So as you guys are sitting here uh, in this like screed area with a few men hers, and you know, these are elevated areas with some large uh, buttes sticking up around. And then you have these men here plus like this altar like stone table in front of you. Down to the southeast on the map are these two. And then, like in different areas nearby, these are five feet of hex. Uh, you guys kind of probably saw them starting to kind of move forward. Uh, I'm going to not have them on horseback, though, because that's just like an added thing I don't want to have to deal with. <laughs> so, um, it definitely seems like they aren't necessarily happy. Uh, with you guys, but both of you recognize the woman as, uh, oh shoot, I already forgot her name, Taleba. So I so don't, Taleba. 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 I don't have a, a massive amount of money backing this the gamerhood so i do steal uh art from the internet so my hats off to whoever did this art because it's kind of sweet uh a little more risque than i'm normally about but anyway uh taleba likely uh nadisian born and she's on a horse and nearby her is another of matteo's gang known as Scabbards. Ooh. That's pretty cool art too. Hey, really man. cool. I do my best to uh, put y'all on the scene. So it's hot as all get out. You're kind of in a desert. Um, apparently you just robbed a merchant and the two of you have been uh, around enough to be friends with each other. Although, you know, uh, I think Vigna would be close enough to Kalam to want to save him if something happens to him. But, you know, I don't know how great of friends you are. Uh, I got to leave something up to you guys. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right. I, I assume we stole uh, stuff from some unscrupulous merchant who's been been ripping people off. We saw him ripping people off in the in the town. Absolutely. That's fine with me. We'll put that in the notes. It was an unscrupulous merchant because Vignal has uh, scruples, apparently. I'm writing this down. What do you think this unscrupulous merchant's name is? Uh, Anyone can chime in. Feel free, Levi. No, uh, Don't be shy. Um, you got some people in the YouTube chat they could they could suggest, maybe. 
It looks like we got people in the Twitch chat too. Are you are you Old or write it in the write it in the in the roll twenty chat. Go to the chat box, uh, Levi, and then go down to the bottom and click in there, and then you can just write in whatever you want. Sure. Who do we got? Oh, Brian in the bunker. Oh, Gabriel. Thanks, Gabriel. Oh, Robert Neep's in there. That's right. Stu's out. Levi's in. Gabriel is one of the people that I invited to this game, by the way. He never answered me, so don't let that guy in Spain uh, fool you all. Yes, Levi, you came after Gabriel. Sorry, buddy. It happens. I, and I get it, too. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know him? It's new reputation. Oh. But Gabriel, uh, 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 Kravoga? No, no, no. That's, uh, uh, this is Gabriel Perez Gashardi, who, he was one of the first per people that I ever gamed with online about 13 years ago, probably. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he awesome. plays in tons and tons of games. He plays in a lot of my games as well. So, super, and also, hmm. Gabriel's going to be at GaryCon March, in March next year, so. Expect some fun stuff. He doesn't live in Spain. He actually lives in yeah. Ur Uruguay. We got to show him a good time. I we will. <laughs> I just I I just say it's Spain because I'm an a hole, and that's an old joke that we've been that we've been I don't know supporting for a very long time. So anyway, it looks like you have about five dudes who um, seem like they have uh, not necessarily the best intent towards Vignal and Kalam and stoically upon that rise you can see uh, Scabbert and Tabella overwatching. Uh, you assume maybe it has something to do with the trouble that you've had with Matteo's gang in the past. Both of you. Maybe separately, maybe at the same time. That's all something that we can figure out later. But we know them. We recognize them. Yes, you recognize them, but these other ones, they're all the same token, so they're basically just kind of uh, faceless minions, uh, most likely of Matteo. So um, they seem like uh, they're bearing uh, like truncheons. So it, it doesn't seem like they're, they have blades out and they're intending to kill anyone. It looks more like they want to capture you guys. So... What do you get? What do you do? Uh, you haven't, you've never played in one of my games before, Levi. So, uh, I'll ask you, what do you, what would you like to do, sir? I bet this is great, but we can't actually hear you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now um, we can. What yeah. Happened? I don't know. You did something, and now we can. Here, okay. okay. I'm going to back away, like, hands up, like, oh, hey, 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 hey. You know, it's, it's hey, calm down. It's, 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 it's all right. And I'm going to slowly be backing away towards that other end you know, by proxy Vignal. Okay. So are, who are you talking to while you're doing it? Like the guy to the north or the two guys to the east, to the east or all of them at once and just kind of looking around? Yeah. Two guys off to the to the right, to the east. Okay, yeah. So you can actually, you should be able to just click on your token and move him as well. But I'm I did done. it for you, so you kind of moved over. What what uh, what's Vignal doing? Uh, I will move back. Also, be closer to Kalam and the. Uh, sort of altar stone altar area. Yeah, so maybe having... I should maybe I should describe that altar a little better for you. So it's probably about eight feet long and eas uh, easily about three feet wide, and it probably stands uh, about three and a half, four feet off the ground. That's where the upper surface is, and uh, it's like there's it's got like a, a dais below it, but the dais is only like two, probably four by four square pieces of stone that are about uh, a foot off the ground and so there's an area underneath it also has like a legs so it would just be like a u-shaped right 
legs come up and then the, the, the top of the table, but the legs go down into these square stones set into the ground below. And it's pretty flat, but there's a lot of like scrabble on the ground and it's hot and uh, it's very dusty where the people are moving around. Um, so even though uh, Kalam is quite a charismatic fellow, uh, even the guys you were talking to pause momentarily and glance up over their shoulder up on the hill where the riders are. No one moves up there. They're just slowly watching. You can't imagine, you know, how hot it must be, but they're uh, putting their poker faces on for sure at this point. And then uh, as if they did say something, all five of these ruffians rush forward with their weapons at you. All right, so in this game, as opposed to Tales of Argosa, we are going to use uh, the optional initiative. So on your character sheet, it should say uh, Deluxe Initiative. I'll try and help you find it, Levi. So, <laughs> so basically what we do in this game, as far as initiative goes, it's you roll a d20. All, almost all of the skill checks and everything are going to be roll under. So it's going to be attribute roll under. Uh, and there's going to be four uh, outcomes of that roll. Uh, there's going to be failure, success, uh, total failure, and great success. So um, rolling under uh, is going to be a success. If you roll under half of whatever the attribute is, it's going to be a great success. And, the, and this character sheet will figure this all out for you. If you roll half over uh, the roll, that's a total failure. So in initiative, did you find the Dux Deluxe Initiative or no? There's going to be like... Yeah. You did find it? I wouldn't say I found it, Jason, but oh. uh, <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> All right, so you see like where it says those orange uh, places of your inventory, main features, attacks, spellbook, inventory, conditions, and notes in the center of the character sheet. Do you see that? Yeah. Right above your attributes. So on the right-hand side of the sheet, right above notes, it'll say deluxe initiative. Just click oh, right the, there. Yeah. Yeah. Just click the roll button. That's sweet. All right. Cool. Did you roll initiative, Robert? No, I was waiting. Oh, it's so it's all individual initiative. So basically, if you roll under your decks, you're going to go before the adversaries go. That's it. And if it's, a, successes. if it's a boss monster or something like that, then you would have to have a great success to go before. So, uh, well. interesting. All right, so um, you can do reactions in this game. It's pretty much like you have one, move, one movement action and then one action. Uh, you can't split the movement action around an action, but you can do an action and then a, 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 a move, or you can do a move and then an action. So, Robert, uh, but if you don't want to do anything, you can say, I'm going to do a reaction, kind of like 5e, and say, hey, if anyone gets close to me, I'm going to stab them. Or I'm going to jump underneath the, the, the altar or whatever. So, Robert, what, what are you, uh, you going to do? I'm going to take the high ground. I'm going to jump on top of this thing. All right. Vignal. Uses and then his... Go ahead. I'm going to swing my spear around in a menacing manner to keep them away. Kind of like Grace Jones and Conan the Destroyer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah kind of like that. I don't that. know if you remember that. <laughs> kind of, yeah, kind of using it more like a. They, you're basically saying that they don't seem to have uh, necessarily lethal weapons. They've got truncheons, right? Clubs. Yeah, yeah truncheons and shields. And they seem like they're dressed in like carbuli, so like some uh, leather armor that's uh, been uh, hard boiled. And then. I'm assuming we don't really want to be on the bad side of Mateo's gang, even though for some reason they, they've got it out for us. We don't know why. Um, so I'm not really looking to kill his men, but uh, more sort of using the spear like a, like a staff and just sort of swinging it around. All right, sweet. So put your character right on top of that thing, man. What, what about Kalam, Levi? Oh. <clears throat> he jumps on top. My reaction is probably going to be to. <laughs> so, uh, so with all this started, I had a I had the, a bag of golden gems in my hand. And I was chewing yeah. on the right. Yeah. I probably still got that in hand. 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna dive beneath that uh, that altar, that space beneath the altar there. Nice. Um, and uh, m- maybe swallow a couple of those uh, larger gems. <laughs> Did you just right watch the opening there. scene? <laughs> just for, just for safekeeping. Because that's exactly what Valak does. I don't know if you remember that or not. Can we, we can fish him out later? <laughs> yeah. No, it's so funny. I love it. All right. So Kalam jumps under the. Uh, uh, jumps under, and these guys rush forward. So all uh, man, men pretty much uh, go can move 30 feet, uh, but you can charge twice your range, and then you basically are at disadvantage uh, if anyone for your... Uh, uh, or people are at advantage when they attack you. So these guys rush in, uh, but you can whack them with your spear too, Vignal, as they do. All right. So it's going to be, yeah. All right. So these guys kind of all rush forward. And you have reach with that thing. So Right. So as they come rushing forward, they're, you know, they're yelling and dust is bouncing off of the scree as they come out with their trunches and their shields. Ah, they don't all look exactly alike, so but they're all the same to you guys. Likely minions of Matteo. Alright, so what Vignal, what do you want to do? Uh, whichever one gets closest to me, the first is going to get the butt end of the spear. All right. See what's that? Is, is, he, is he really going to be a butt face? The other guy is, yeah. All right, good. All right, so yeah, go ahead. Do you want to do an exploit or anything? So in this game, Levi, all characters can do mighty deeds. They're called minor and major nice. exploits. Uh, and the way that you do them is you basically... Minor basically means it's a temporary thing, and it can only happen to one adversary. Uh, to succeed, usually you're going to have to hit and do damage, and uh, you would explain narratively what that mighty deed is ahead of time. And then usually there's going to be some sort of contested roll, and if, if you win the contested roll, then whatever your deed is goes off. A major exploit is going to be like something that's permanent. So like uh, cutting off the scorp- the giant scorpion's stinger tail or something, that would be a major exploit. And that's going to that's gonna go into a luck roll. So basically, I'm just going to ask what you want to do. If you, if you want to do something like kick dirt in their face, shine light in their eyes off your dagger, all that stuff is codified in this game with these exploits. All right, so do you want to do an exploit or anything, Vignal? Yeah, or? I'm, I'm really just trying to knock the guy out. All right, go for it. Oh, AC 16, 6 damage. All right. Right, and I don't know what you want to do with the, uh, since I took the signature weapon. Oh, what's it say? It's the damage dice, exploding dice, if you roll the highest damage roll. Did you do that? Uh, I just, since I'm trying not to use the spear tip and using more of this as a... I'm not going to do... Staff. It's, it's going to be, it's not going to be lethal damage. I don't, I don't buy into all that. Making it harder to knock someone out than to kill them personally. So I'm pretty okay. laid back. All right. So basically, you're, you uh, what happens to this dude when you whack him with the butt? Do you want me to roll again or no? For what? The damage? The damage no, it's the... enough to knock him out if that's all you want to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to smack him right across the head and knock him back. And right. I'll bellow out for the rest and say come on the rest of you will get the same all right so he his head spins around and he goes face first into the dust dust goes up around him all right uh kalam did you want to do anything from down there you just letting him come after me now yeah um so so you said they they were on horses or they weren't they're not on horses yeah i took that out because i didn't want to have to deal with that okay right on Okay. Um, well, then, sure. The, as as one of them, so like he's on top, and there's that space underneath the mm-hmm. uh, the altar. As one of them is running up to hit him, I'm gonna just come up with my sword, try to basically cut his belt off, his whole so his pants fall down. All right, I like um, it. <laughs> just kind of trip him up to you know either fall or to you know because we're not trying to kill these guys, but we are trying to disable them. So. 
Well, you can choose to if you like. So what I should tell you, I love your description, but you actually have an ability. So if you look down below okay. your attributes, that's called um, Unseen Whip. Yes. You see that? So basically, yeah. you get three of these uh, tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use um, between long rests, okay? And uh, this is one of them. If it has TNT in the front of it, that's kind of how I'm establishing that it's that. So you could do this, and you could say, hey, I'm doing this. And they basically, he automatically has to make a, uh, a luck deck save. And if he doesn't, then he's tripped. So that's, I think to me that oh, would be easier yeah. than the actual... Um, and you can still do the same, obviously, the same description and everything. I just think it would be easier to use this uh, than it would be to uh, the other because a luck deck save for him is going to be very, very difficult. Okay, let's do it. All right. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. All right. So a luck deck save. A five is pretty good, though, because we have to roll below, but I think they're going to be a four. And he's not going to have a bonus on decks. So he is on the ground. But you just remember now you only have two more uh, tricks and techniques that you can use. So you can just like kind of mark that off on the character sheet. And until I uh, rest, right? Um, so the resting is special and we'll go into that later. Okay. I'm just going to put a trap in that on him. All right. So already two of them are down. But uh, Kalam, you're no longer necessarily uh, protected uh, from the uh, from the attackers. But you're kind of behind, underneath, and away from them. They don't necessarily know you. You you don't have a surprise on them or anything. But you're not necessarily so. These three dudes swing their truncheons at uh, Vigna. I'm going to give them um, a minus one, not disadvantage. Uh, all right, four six three is not going to do it. So they all come in. They're trying to get it. They're tripping over each other falling in the dirt on their own uh, pants. Uh, dust is everywhere. And, uh, yeah, they're not very happy. So it sounds like we can do one more round. Um, I'll check a morale for them. All right, yeah. With, uh, with Mateo's right-hand woman up there, they aren't ready to give up the goat yet. So let's roll initiative again. So it's just another initiative roll. Oh, I should move this. Young Malik, but I had to make sure he had a headband on. So, <laughs> all right. So, great success from Kalam. So, uh, what's Kalam going to do now? Oh, so I, I, I go first. Okay, I got you. Um, he got his pants around his ankles. He's knocked one of the guys out. That still leaves four more. Um, you said there was a lot of dust that was kicked up. Three more. Three more. Yep, yep. There's yeah, a lot, there's of, a lot dust of dust was... around you guys. Yeah. Oh well, then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to hide. So you can either duck back down or do whatever. Um, yeah. So I think I think I'll probably just let you hide, and then I'll make a detection check. And if if it gets close, then we will just do a. Contested, okay. uh, their your their detection versus your hide. All right. Got it. Okay, so uh, only if it matters because they seem like they're most focused on uh, Vignal, obviously because he is a renowned uh, warrior from uh, the Vornari of the Vornari, which are kind of like a cross between you, you two. <laughs> he, he, so he's like a. I picture you as a midlander in Argosin, to be honest. But you know, you could be a you could be a Vornari if you wanted to. Uh, the Vornari are like. Yeah, there's like that. Go, go there's ahead. like that big dog. There's like the big dog in, in the cartoons, and there's a little dog, you know, who's like, "What are we gonna do today, Spike? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? You know, that's from the, I got <laughs> basically you, man. our relationship. <laughs> I can see that. The uh, uh, I was just gonna say the Vornari for. New people to Midlands are is like a cross between the men of the Iron Coast uh, from like Game of Thrones because they worship one god who is the uh, like a, they call the Deep One who they fear more than worship, and uh, they're very much like uh, Viking basically at the same time. So a cross between those two. 
All right. Uh, what, what's Vignal doing this time? I'm going to do largely the same. This time I'm just going to bring the the spear staff down, smack him right in the head like a like a hammer. Step to the side like before, just coming down. All right. Slamming this guy in the head. Go for it. AC nine is not going to do it, sir. So why don't you go ahead and make a hide roll? If you do, you want to try and get advantage on an attack or something, Kalam? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, why don't you? Um, you basically just have I to succeed it. on your stealth. So look at your uh, skills. Oh, you did it. You did it. All right. A great success. So yeah, no problem, man. So yeah, I'll give you advantage on, on an attack on one of these guys. What are you going to do to him? In the um, game, we're not trying to murder these guys in cold blood. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they did choose the uh, the mercenary profession as as their profession. So uh, that comes in its own little and bruises. So I'll uh, I'll give a nice uh, bubbling, not not like a permanent like I'm not cutting his you know his <laughs> cutting his half of his foot off, but I'll give a nice little humbling leg uh, leg strike to to one of these guys. All right, like a hamstring him or something with your short sword. No, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna end this. Not forever. You know, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. It's not forever, but just trying to put him down. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and make an attack. So you should be able to just roll right on the short sword. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm rolling the... Uh, no, that's not it. There we are. All right. 15 versus a 4. All right. So make a uh, make a dex check versus this guy's uh, constitution. He failed. So another guy is on the ground. You didn't even have to because he failed. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so three of them are, are relatively down. Colum is dancing, dancing around in the uh, in in the dusts and uh, surprising them. And uh, our audience can see. It looks like. Uh, let me see here. Where am I? Taleba raises one finger. And uh, uh, Scarborough, oh, Scabbert pulls out a little horn and toots on it, and they all uh, start to back up and move away from you guys. Anytime someone leaves your area, you can attack them if you choose, unless they have a special power, like Kalam has a special power to be able to get away without them attacking. But uh, you guys going to stop, or what's the plan? Yeah, they're backing away. I'm not gonna attack them. And like one of them helps. I'll just them. I'll just sort of goad them as they are backing up and say, "Yeah, you better back up." They like they're trying to help each other away, and some of them look a little uh, glad that they weren't tasting uh, your guys' steel and only your fists and pommels of your weapons. <laughs> uh, Following the big guys' cue, so uh, yeah. All right, so I'll I'll, I'll like really brave. <laughs> step over one of them. So these guys uh, like very dramatically ride down the hill and come come close to you guys. If I can get him in the picture, the other ones are helping the guy up who's unconscious and like squirting some water out of their water skin on him to try and wake him up, and uh, they're like. Um, Big now, this is the woman talking. It seems that your reputation does precede you. What do you, do you say? Anything or? Uh, what depends on what you've heard. <laughs> they don't seem to note it. They don't seem to say anything to uh, Kalam unless he says something himself. Um, you do remember that Matteo uh, 
did a favor for you and we were only wishing for a return. Uh, he said that you would be the man that could help us, but I wasn't sure. So I hope you don't mind that we stage this little test. You could have just asked. Well, we weren't sure that you'd help us. It and seems how can how can you be sure that we'll help you now? We can't, of course. What is it that you think you wish? And Kalam, you uh, you notice uh, Scabbert seems to be fiddling with charms on his wrist, uh, and. Um, mm. Basically, <laughs> I'm a terrible plagiarizer, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Taleba asks you, Vignal, what is it? Do you jump down from the thing? Or are you guys still standing up there? Like, No, I'm, I'm still standing up there. Okay, I like it. What is it that you wish, Vignal? She points over at this obelisk off to her left. Stare at the obelisk and wish it. As hard as you can. Is this sorcery? There is... There's, there's no real definition of what we can do to help you if you can only help us. So what is there in Vignal's past that he uh, might be willing to do? And if you don't know right now, it's something you can come up with later. I don't care. Something that he desires? Yeah. I'm not sure right now. So basically, you know, the heat waves, as Vignal is staring at the obelisk, you can see the heat waves almost get more uh, visible as, there, as this, uh, the dust is kind of glittering in the sun uh, that everything has been kicked up. But there... He can almost discern it through. Maybe it's a person, a person who died, a love interest from somewhere. Uh, and you can see them there. And Tabel and Taleba uh, kind of laughs. It's true. Whatever it is, Vignal, we can give it to you. Why don't you make a willpower test? A great success. All right, so you're pretty sure that uh, she is trying to use something to really convince you to do it. Um, but it's also possible that Mateo and her and their group could possibly give you what you want. Right. I'd say the, the apparition or person I saw would have been some some former love. But Vignal, I think, is skeptical of this. Yeah, meanwhile, like I'm down there, like, do you see a toilet made of solid gold too? Like <laughs> <laughs> just like jaw on the ground, you know. The merchant's daughter has gone missing. Her name is... Oh, I don't know if I put it in here. Anyway, it's this merchant's daughter that's missing, and I think that's very important to you. <laughs> uh, you actually recognize the name, and you'd heard she's been, she had been uh, kidnapped, and there was a reward for her. And maybe, Kalam, you kind of heard that maybe uh, the gang that Mateo's gang is a part of, which is, I think, called the Red something. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, some people were kind of saying that maybe they had done the kidnapping and there was supposed to be a pretty big blackmail for it. Mm -hmm.
We know where she is. Will you help us? I look over at Kalam. What do you think about this? I'm just still kind of rubbing those uh, gems that I that I uh, swallowed. I'm trying to force those force those down. <laughs> Don't want any, any later day blockage. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, hey, it sounds like something to do. Sounds like something we're gonna, that, we, that we can get paid for. I, I could use another an, another few weeks of uh, vacation after this is all over. They tried to manipulate us, though. That's extra. Do you do you tell uh, Vigna what you know about the missing girl, and that she had there's a reward for her return? Oh yeah, I th I'm sorry. I thought that was uh, common knowledge. Absolutely. No, no, Kalam knows I'll that. Yeah. I'll whisper that over, like, "Hey, I think you know, they're definitely pulling a fast one." Like I said, this is business. Anybody wants to pull a fast one, that's extra. Listen, they're all snakes, anyways. They're 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 it, it, they're always going to stab us in the back. It's just it's you it's it's you it's just you and me. <laughs> Let's just take on the world. <laughs> got a big guy. Do the old slap on the on the on the on the shoulder, but it's like hitting stone, like you know. <laughs> the Red Hooks. That's the name of the gang. Red hooks. Tell us more, Tylaba. Where will we find her? I I always believe that uh, there's more power in showing than there is telling. This is when the guys come back over with some horses for you to uh, mount up, or maybe you guys have your own horses, and they're like, "It is this way." And now there's a monta a riding montage. So talk to the people. I got to pee and grab a coffee. Give me two minutes. All right. Who's in the chat? How can I see who's in the chat? I'm going to refresh my tea and I'll be right back. I guess it's just me. But do I just, uh, should I just stare at the camera and sing? Why not? Um, there are people sorry, in the YouTube I'm... chat. There are people in the YouTube chat. So talk to someone else. I didn't even know we were on YouTube. Yeah. All right. Hobbs is on <laughs> Twitch and YouTube. I right, read right them. Well, tell you what, it's got to be a show. It's got to be a show. So hold on. Your reading today will be from Tales of H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> Starting with my favorite H.P.L. story, The Color Out of Space. <laughs> West of Arkham, the hills rise wild, and there are valleys with deep woods that no axe has ever cut. There are dark, narrow glens where the trees slope fantastically. Where thin brooklets trickle without ever having caught the glimpse of sunlight. The gentler slopes there are farms, ancient and rocky, with squat moss-coated cottages brooding eternally over old New England secrets in the lee of great ledges. These are all vacant now. Wide chimneys crumbling in the shingled, sides bulging perilously beneath low gambrel roofs. To find out what a gambrel roof is. I don't know where a gamble roof is. The old folk have gone away, and foreigners do not like to live there. French Canadians have tried it, Italians have tried it, and others have come and departed. Oh, I'm, re I'm reading Lovecraft, Hobbs. I'm sorry. Oh, nice. I, I can't see the chat, so we're just reading. All right, there's no, uh, there's no, no one's really chatting in Twitch, but I think there's some people who not. are. I'm reading a book. <laughs> so out loud. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, man. No, that's good. You could have been like talking about, you know, an upcoming Kickstarter or a current one or whatever you want. Nobody wants to hear that crap, you know. 
Listen, I, I got all my stuff on uh, on on uh, social media. It's super easy to find. Probably already beating down the doors of anybody who's interested, anyways. So either you want it or you don't. It's it's cool. It's fine. Um, but it's out there. Game. Um, but yeah, they don't need to hear me one more time talking about, you know, talking about this project one more last time, you know, it's cool. Gabriel's out there in, in, uh, YouTube land. He says you deserve some, uh, XP. <laughs> I'll give him well, something. What do you do? You know, it's, it's, I can't see the chat. So it's like, I, I can't interact really. So I'll give you uh, just... something better than XP since you may never play this character again, Levi. Uh, we'll give you uh, one more of your tip, your tricks and techniques back, so you'll be back to three three for the reading. Thank you, HP Lovecraft. Nice. Thank you, Colorado Space. Good work. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to shift this over to a new uh, map. Is this what your last roll twenty game looked like? Let's see. When you played it, I mean. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to get some accolades for myself. <laughs> it was a couple of years ago, and it was just a, it was, it was really just kind of a quick play test, and um, my first time using Roll Twenty. Again, I don't game online very much, so, um, yeah, you know, I kind of like this, yeah, a little bit. These maps but, um, are this, this good. Is, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> well, the maps are much, much better. The tokens are better too. Oops. All right, so we'll have this sitting here for the. So on the route, um, I, we should probably wait for uh, Robert. Hey, what's uh, the shirt you got on? Oh, uh, we usually do that. We do a. Uh, we wear black T-shirts on Wednesdays, and we always say ask what the person has. So we saw Robert had a Hobbs and French shirt. Good job, buddy. I am wearing a, D a drink, spin, run shirt. Right. You ever heard I of it? said OSR. <laughs> you ever heard of drink, spin, run? No. What is that? So drink, spin, run was one of the first RPG podcasts. It was with Don Stroud and Adam Miskevich. And it was called nice. drink, spin, run. And the first part of the show was they would talk about what them and their guests were drinking, listening to, and what kind of games they were running. And then they would usually have a topic afterwards. If you if you ever feel like listening to an old podcast, you should check it out because it's uh, it was very kind of talk showy. And in many ways, I kind of... Um, it was definitely one of the shows that inspired Hobbs and Friends, for sure. Well, I like uh, Don Stroud's work a lot. So um, that Apparitions book he did, did for DCC it was just like chef's kiss. Yeah, I really, nice. really, really like that that, that zine. Um, if I had a black shirt, that, if I knew to wear a black shirt, I would have worn uh, my weird frontier shirt I just got from our, our mutual friend Beatty. Nice, he just sent you so, one. Yeah, well, I bought the gigantic leather bound uh, eight thousand page book. So uh, threw a t shirt in, and it's pretty awesome. So that, that's what I would have worn. Yep, that's it. You mean this one? <laughs> yes, sir. I uh, bought two of these. I gave one to my brother. It's a monster. Yeah, I gave one to my brother for his birthday. Like me only, or only the uh, only the worthy may lift it. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Oh, nice. I don't have a weird Frontiers t-shirt, but I do have a Dark Trails t-shirt. <laughs> hey, nice, nice. <laughs> You have to you now. You have to get rid of that now. I was. That's what I was told. But I'm going to wait <laughs> until the Pinkertons show up. <laughs> All right. So. There you go. You're back. Oh, shit, I never should have done that. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. I missed and turned it off. I forgot that it can't get my camera, so you guys aren't going to be able to see of the 
But did oh. they say who took her? They did. No, no, no. They said somebody took it from her, correct? Yeah, no. something something happened in the gorge. They And they lead you to the area, and this is what you can see, the map now, where these, uh, these different buttes are. There's a couple giant vultures, seeming, and you can see a wagon that's mostly destroyed. And there's like a bunch of... Uh, uh, the scree and scrub is all trashed. This this gorge is a well-known path between two decently sized outposts. And there's there's always been these twin skulls with like a door that people have always stayed away from. Uh, and a few menhirs around. Not unlike uh, the scree uh, flatlands that you guys were, uh, Vignal was worshipping or praying or meditating or whatever it is he was doing. Maybe this merchant that you guys robbed was actually had uh, protection from the Red Hooks. And maybe you guys didn't know that. And that's another reason that maybe you don't want to necessarily be on the opposite side of the Red Hooks. And they kind of brought that up as uh, they would forget that little indiscretion if you would help them uh, regain the merchant's daughter. So blackmail, is it? <laughs> Always have their hands in something dirty. So you guys aren't necessarily right where I put you on the to uh, on the screen, but you can kind of see this area. So this is still five foot a square, so the gorge isn't big. I think normally, you know, uh, they would just kind of move through this area. Oh, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. I don't know how to do it. There's a way that you can show like a path, but then the path would go out. Oh, but the difference is from here, you guys can see that the stone, double stone doors that have been there for who knows how long are open. And there's a bloody, a bloody path. You don't see uh, the two aurochs that were drawing this or horses or whatever. You see one of them are laying there, picked over, and there's a bloody path that leads into the doorway. Well, that's not ominous at all. Um, okay. <laughs> Have we heard anything before about this uh, two skull gorge? You definitely have. There's two big skulls there. Giant that's skulls in the, in the <laughs> desert. And there's a door that is like, uh, maybe it's been all covered up before, but well, why don't we roll a general lore? So what we do here in this game is what a skill does is any skill is going to be just whatever attribute is associated with it. But if you have a skill, you get a plus one uh, on that roll. You don't, it's not on the roll, it's to the skill because you want to roll under. Uh, so you should just be able to click the skill and see what you get. You guys can both do it. So it be general lore or wilderness lore? This would definitely be a general lore. All right, a terrible failure from Kalam. All right, a, a success from Vignal. Um, I think that you have heard a rumor that that is a tomb, like maybe a famous tomb robber uh, allegedly got through the doors, and it's some kind of tomb or crypt to a giant. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you had me at Crypt Tomb Giant. Um, <laughs> all right. It makes the job more appealing here. As you guys are overlooking the pass, one of the giant vultures wings over to where uh, one of the corpses are and starts picking bloody flesh off of the, off of the horse that was there. Hmm. I like that as a distraction, uh, maybe to keep it from picking the flesh off of us. That would, that's uh, that's preferable than being attacked. Um, what do you say? Both of you guys roll uh, detection. If you don't have detection, you roll a perception. Also, if you have the skill, you can use your reroll pool to reroll that if you wish. Oh, another failure from Kalam. 
This guy. No. This is, I don't see perfect. anything. <laughs> it's perfect. All right. You see that there are some forms that are have some like sand overcoming them. You see one of these move, and it looks like one of the guards is still alive, hiding under the wagon. All right, I'll mention that to Kalam. Well, we hope he's uh, hiding under the wagon and not just a dead person getting up and walking around. But um, I'm going to take that take that shot. Hmm. And there were, there were two giant vultures? Yeah, do you see them both or no? I do. Oh, you think I was lying to you or what? <laughs> no, I just made sure that I didn't see any more, you know? <laughs> well, you didn't see anything, Kalam, so no, I'm just You're kidding. Right. <laughs> uh, all right, what do you guys want to do? What do you think, big guy? <laughs> Go talk to this guy, um, or well, we'd have to. I think David. I think we need to scare off or kill the giant vulture. I don't think it's just going to yeah. give up its its lunch readily without some sort of intimidation. Yeah, let's see here. Um... And are we like on this? I know you said we're not necessarily where you had our tokens. You just wanted to get us on the map. Are we coming yes. from that direction? Yeah, you're coming from the south. And can we be up on this like hill? Sure. You're kind of close though if you're on that hill. Um, it's possible that at any time, you know, one of the vultures might be able to spot you. Okay. Maybe it would be better to be sort of skulking along the edge. Uh, more like coming around. Well, we would we we would have been somewhat further back and see both of these because I don't want to like metagame and go, oh, I saw these things. But really, my character wouldn't have been able to see those. Yeah, you'd have been able to see them because when you came up over the top, you would have been able to see it's kind of a valley, a gulch that's down in here. So at one point, you'd have been a little higher and you could look down. Okay, well then my intent would be to come around this hill uh, and throw my axe at the one by the wagon. That one there. All right, so your plan is just to kind of sneak up as close as you can and then roll around and throw your axe? Because I think you got to be within 30 feet to be without any... 25. Purposes. Yeah, I'd have 25. to be like right by that tree. All right, so I think that's going to be a stealth roll. All right. So you're going to roll your stealth, and they're going to be... I'm going to roll it with disadvantage on their detection or their perception. All right, so they got a five, so that's pretty good. So what was your stealth roll? Great success. A great success. But how low is it? I can't tell. An eight, so they beat you with a five. Uh, that's going to be a great success for them, too. These guys are very perceptive. I'm going to see what they're... Uh, what's Kalam doing during this? Loading a crossbow. Uh, are you going to kind of, like, use him as a distraction? Are you going to go where he is? Or are you going to be somewhere else, like maybe on top of this butte here or this hill? No, I've, I've loaded I've loaded the cross, a crossbow, and I'm, I'm like... Can, is, can I hold an action? Yeah, you can you can call a reaction basically. You can say if something if they fly yeah, towards yeah. you, you shoot it or something. I definitely like I said, I'm gonna load that crossbow and then I'm gonna hold. All right. So you can't really hold, but you can have a reaction. So what are you what's your reaction gonna be? Uh, well then I will load and sneak. Okay. Well what all I meant is is if they attack you, I'm gonna shoot. You just have to kind of declare what you're gonna do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got a pretty high initiative. I'll uh, I'll I'll hope for hope for good initiative for that. I'll sneak instead. Okay, because if sneak if you wanted to say you're going to wait until one of them comes towards you, you would just be able to shoot it because that would be your reaction. You wouldn't have to do your initiative. Uh, we haven't even rolled initiative yet, basically. So why don't you guys make a stealth check? And we'll see. oh he he already did. Why don't you make one? What up? Mm 
Nice success. All right, so as you guys are sneaking around, you can hear uh, the the vultures kind of squawk at each other. And the one that's up on this butte really starts like flapping its wings. So these vultures, the, the wingspan is probably 15 to 20 feet. They're massive. Uh, you can see on there that they're, they're pretty darn big, but they are still birds. Uh, the one is just kind of like flapping his wings and squawking. The other one's looking back at him and they're like kind of squawking at each other. Um, you almost feel like you can see the thug below the wagon trembling with fear and trying to dig himself a little deeper into the uh, debris uh, and the sand. But Vignal, you can certainly run up there and fire if you'd like. All right. Um, well, I was, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying I, I wasn't going to fire. I was a bit, I, I misheard, so. No, you don't have to fire if you don't want to. He, Vignal is going well, to. Yeah, I said I loaded and I was moving, so. Yep, yep. That's fine. You'll be able to shoot if you want to. I don't care. You guys were both sneaking up there. That's fine. Because they're not really attacking you or anything. They're just uh, trying to maybe intimidate you as an animal does, right? Right. And I threw my axe. It's only a seven. All right. Your axe goes flying. Do, do you want to fire, Levi? How far can I get, uh, Hobbs? Oh, uh, you can be up where he is if you want to, or you can move, you know, 30 feet. Or, yeah, 30 feet and still fire. Oh no. Did you guys lose me or Levi? Levi. Dang it. All right, so you missed. Levi was reading because both of us were gone and he doesn't have anything up. He's not looking at any chats. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why sorry guys that's why you can't see anybody at this point you can see me nope they can't see you why not because as soon as Levi left that changed all the cameras oh okay So in, it's a, a night a night of technical problems. Yeah, it's you know how it is. Sometimes happens. Yeah, yeah it sometimes happens. It, it is. I mean, this is obviously a mom and pop shop. Um, what I think I want to do. Oh, he's moving his character though. You could type in the chat if you wanted to, or make your roll or whatever, Levi. Because I don't know if you realize it, but we lost your camera and we can't hear you. <laughs> Levi doesn't know that he left us. All right, let me see if he is on. So while he's having technical difficulties, I can open up his character sheet and um, roll for him. You think I should do that? Yeah, he just said he tried to refresh and it's not working. He's got to go into the uh, the gate the Discord game room again. <laughs> turn off your computer and turn it back on. 
<laughs> that come through? Yeah. That'd be an AC9, which I don't think is going to probably right. hit. That will also miss. Oh, there he is. Hey, buddy. He's on, he left. Oh, hey, back. buddy. <laughs> Hello. You're back. Did you want to fire your crossbow at one of them or no? Oh, no, not, not unless I'm being attacked. Nope, you're not. Okay, so I said you did, but it it just happened, so it doesn't matter. You didn't have to. You missed anyway. <laughs> so, um, no, you're not really be, being yeah. attacked at this point, but Vignal is attacking. I think we'll roll initiative and see what they do. Okay, you want us to roll initiative? Yes, please. Uh, Levi. Right, I'm, coming, dude, I'm coming, I'm coming. There Jeez. we go. It wasn't that kind of question, sir. <laughs> the hell you say. All right. <laughs> Did you roll your initiative? Yes, I did. I did. Oh, shoot. Nothing was showing. I must have moved it. Two great successes. Oh, nice. All right, what are you guys going to do? Vignal or com Column, whichever one wants. Oh, you're going to go up there and try and uh, get next to the thing? Okay, I like that. I'm not going to slide right next to him, but it's a big wagon. I'm going to slide at the other end so that I'm still like, he'd have to scramble to get to me. Uh, but as I slide underneath, I'm going to say, hey, hey, calm down, calm down. But I'm going to have that 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 uh, that, that uh, crossbow pointed right at him. All right. Yeah. So he's got like a big uh, fat eye, fat eye, black eye and a fat lip. And he looks quite disheveled. And uh, you can see that he looks like he has some sort of uh, like one of his legs looks kind of mangled. Hmm. But not like from claws. It looks like it's from some sort of bludgeoning weapon. Hey, what happened here? What 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 happened to you? What's what's with uh, what's with the wagon? What's with those the gates and the what happened here? His eyes are like huge, and he's like, "Hey, what about these vultures? Hey, shall we do something about hey, them?" Hey, you tell, tell, calm down. Tell me what happened here, <laughs> and then I'll tell you how we're gonna get out of this pickle with the vultures. But right now, I need you to calm down. Tell, tell me what happened. What's Vignal doing? Uh, I would charge up, mm -hmm. keep my distance a little bit, however far I get back I can be, um, and attack from ten feet away at this one that's that's feeding. All right, yeah. So it will get po it will get poked with the pony end of the spear. All right, go ahead. All right, nice, a critical. So, Levi, when you roll a natural 20 in low fantasy gaming, you just do max damage. Nice. And that's 10 points. Is that set up correctly, sir? I believe so, because isn't the critical, it is critical damage is maximum damage plus the attribute modifier and half your level rounded up. That's correct, man. Good work, sir. Good work. Yeah, so it takes a really nasty, nasty shot. Let's see what it thinks about that, because it is just a bird. 13. Tiny vulture. All right. Strangely enough, it comes in and uh, kind of goes a little ape crap on you. So it has three attacks. Two claws and a nasty beak. All right. So both claws miss, but when it comes down with its beak, so you saw a natural 20, now you get to see a natural one is a counterattack by whatever you attacked. So Vignal, go ahead and attack. All right, that's not quite enough to hit it. 
But uh, basically, you know, Vignal quick steps to the side when its beak comes down and gets nothing but sand and uh, strikes out, misses. Um, I think he's like, I, I, can't, I can't move like this. There, feller. Uh, that, that, that one eye smashed my leg. One eye, huh? What do you mean one eye? He smashed your leg with what? Where did he come from? He, he jumped out of the desert. I don't know where he came from, but it was well before these vultures came. He came, he smashed the horses, he smashed the others, and he took off with the woman and the other horse. He had to be so 14 one... feet tall with one eye. Hmm. Okay. How long have you been here? How long ago was that? Two days. I thought about eating Edgar, but haven't yet. I'll slide across uh, my uh, water skin. Still with the crossbow pointed at him? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he, he comes anywhere close to me, he's, he's getting it. He greedily drinks it. You know that he's had to have some water, and maybe you see like an empty skin or two laying around him from his fellows. All right. Um, sure. Let's roll initiative again, Vignal. See if the other bird comes to... Oh, the other bird's coming in now. Go ahead and roll initiative, Vignal. Success. Success. Go ahead. You can hear... Uh, from the other side as the other vulture comes in. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know if you're going to do anything, Callum, or whatever, but he goes, the weird thing, fellow. He seemed to be dressed quite well for a giant. Hmm. What do you mean, dressed well? He had, like, one of those Nadisian togas on. Hmm. The Dissians are like a dark-skinned culture from the south that are kind of Roman, Greek, Greekish. There are definitely oh. conquerors that are trying to take over much of the realm, but not all the Dissians are like that, obviously. I'm not all black and white and more gray, but some of the NPCs are not okay. going to be awesome narrators, so they may have their own opinions, right? So, All right, what are you going to do, Vignal? You got one that's here and uh, another one that seems like it's... Uh, uh, been fired up enough that it's coming in your direction. Uh, seeing that I'm about to get both of them coming after me, I'm going to go into my rage. All right. What's that look like? Uh, vein popping on my forehead. I, you know, bellow out a, a war cry and I'm going to stab this one that's right in front of me that I've already hurt pretty bad. Ooh, I like I like that confidence. <laughs> but no all right column uh you can hear uh the beating of wings as more dust is kicked up around and uh you know that the other vulture is coming in do you want to do anything yeah as as he is as a guy has greedily drinking down my my uh my water uh that's the distraction so i can get away um i'm gonna roll out from beneath the um beneath the cart and try to roll to a, a position, uh, or try to move to a position of, uh, oh, like where I, I'm either in the shadow of one of those larger, um, one of, uh, shit, hold on. Oh, there's nothing around me. Um, crap. Uh, then I'll roll to the to the far side of that uh, that that cart, maybe where it's throw where it's the it's throwing a shadow. Yeah. So this cart uh, kind of is big. Right, but it's been kind of destroyed, and so there's bits of debris littered around, like there was almost like an airplane crashed here or something. Okay. So you could definitely find something that if you're trying to hide or something amidst this area. How does a backstab work here in 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 this system? Can I backstab with with a ranged weapon? Sure. Oh, All right. <laughs> so the actual skill, I should probably look it up. And Jason, just to uh, clarify, so this, the rage gives me plus two to hit, so that would have been a 12. I don't know if that mattered. Nope, not enough. 
All right, so okay. I lied. It's only a melee attack that backstab is. All right. Well, if this uh, if this second bird comes comes rolling in on um, on Big Maul's backside, I'll uh, I'll let loose with my crossbow. Okay, and you do see that the one the one giant vulture is. It looks pretty sorely wounded from some slashes from Vignal's spear or some stab wounds. It's what I'm going to tell you is it's in this game it's called staggered, so you know that it's at least under half his hit points. And you have uh, once per staggered target after you successfully hit with a melee attack, you may add your backstab damage. So you can do something special if it's staggered, but you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to do that because it's all melee in this game. It's definitely designated that way. All right. Um, I will do that, actually. Can I, can I, now that I have that piece of information, I'm able to kind of dial it Ab back a bit. Absolutely. And I don't think it knows yeah. you're here. So I would give you, uh, when making a melee attack by a target that is surprised by you, you get a plus four and an additional D8 damage. So I'll let you backstab okay. it is basically what I'm saying. All right, so I'll I'll do that okay. for sure. Um, and that way he can just go ham on the new one, on that other vulture. Yeah, he's like peck to death with six attacks around. All right, there we go. A fourteen, that hits. I'll score. Yeah. So so what happens to this thing when you come flying out and attack it? So sometimes I'll just ask players to narratively kind of tell us what happens. And um, as long as you're not breaking any rules or anything, I just let it stand as that narration. Well, uh, it's going to, you know, he's getting, he's raging on this thing and it, it rears up, you know, wings beating claws, getting ready to come down on him. And that, uh, as because it's elevated, we can see the under under part of the of, of the vulture. Um, it's a heart shot. All right, are you it's talking about like its genitals or something when you say under it? I mean, uh, I'm confused. Oh no no no! So like the, <laughs> the, the, the... you can see under his Bird? vulture apron. You can see right under his virtual apron. Uh, anyway, all right, it's <laughs> it is dead. Vulture, giant vulture down, and that's just in time for this other bird to come screeching forward and wail into Vignal. Oh, so it got a natural 20 on one of its claws. Ew. So that's four points of damage, but that's the only one that'll hit. And I think, you know, just take whatever your uh, raging gives you in order to uh, uh, mitigate any of that damage. Just go ahead. All right. So now we'll roll initiative again. Ooh, look at it, Kalam. Ew. All right. Oh, yeah, you rolled a four. Nice. So what are you going to do, Kalam? <laughs> Re reload that crossbow. <laughs> okay. Oh, I thought you stabbed it with your sword. No, no, reloaded it. Okay. Oh, because you said I could... Okay. No, you didn't need any of that, though. You did enough damage anyway that you wouldn't even have needed it. Oh, 14. It's fine either way. All right, but just in the future, you can't backstab with uh, uh, with a crossbow. Got it. All right. Um, it. So you can attack this one or whatever, however you want to do it. If it was your sword, that's fine. Then you still have a lo loaded crossbow. <laughs> Man, um, he's raging, yeah? Yeah, big is. Um, well, in, you know, before. in that case, I, I, I'm going to get out of the way of this rage. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to end up as a skewer. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, it's a Cyclops, and I'm going to run. Okay, nice. All right, so moving there, you falling in a pit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> totally teasing. All right, nice. So this this thing comes in on you, scratches you, and I think it's your turn, Vignal. Yep. Uh, 
All right, seven points of damage. All right, you can attack again as it is had enough and it's wheeling off. All right, uh, 13 hits. How much damage do you do? Uh, first one was 15. Oh, no, you're right, because it's the plus two. So 13 hits, the second one, six damage. I got you, buddy. <laughs> All right, it survives, and it uh, goes wheeling off into the uh, high noon, I guess. I don't I don't know what you call it in this situation. So <laughs> Callum is uh, wheeling. He's stepping through. You see bloody sand uh, with bits of gore falling off. Like You, you see... Uh, a horse's hoof laying here. Um, and, but you also see like a strip of uh, like lacy cloth. Mm. Underneath you can see like a guy who's like low crawling away towards one of the perches of uh, Vignal out from underneath the wagon. Clom, what do you do, Clom? Okay. Well, but wait, is he still raging? Like I, that's that's why I ran away because I figured he was just like going crazy. I don't. It's not that dangerous in uh, low fantasy gaming. I don't think he can kind of stop. Like right. I think it only lasts right on. for whatever your level is, right? So I think or whatever range, your bonus is. Yeah, I got you. All right. Uh, well, then I'll just start looking around. Then I'll start searching the area. You know, give it one of these. Like what area you're talking? So like basically these are bluffs on my maps. Whenever you see this area here, so this is the elevated, and the higher the elevation, the higher it is. So like this is lower. Like this is probably a few feet off the ground. Where this might be six or seven feet off the ground. This up here might be eight feet off the ground. But like up here gotcha. is the higher elevation. This looks like it's a bunch of stony scree. These are these uh, uh, buttes that are up. There's like a small uh, puddle of water that's gathered with a tree here. Uh, these are menhirs. So these are kind of like about, they look like they're made out of sandstone, um, maybe stacked sandstone, but at the top they come up to a four-pointed pyramid on the top almost, and they're also up here. You can see this uh, double stone double door is laying in pieces on the ground and like I say there is a, a bloody swath of debris and animal parts leading up towards this door okay that's uh it's a little bit more information cool oh well like a gentleman I'm gonna go and refill my water skin and um awesome over here by this oasis pool yeah Awesome, good, <laughs> perfect. All right, what are you gonna do, Vig? Now, uh, I'm gonna come over here where this guy is crawling out, and say, I don't, I don't think I was terribly aware of what was going on. In, although I would assume I would have seen Kalam go under there and do something, but I wouldn't have been hearing any of that. So, I'll motion to Kalam and I'll point to the the guy on the ground, one of Mateo's guys, and I'm like. Is he good? Hey, drink all my water. <laughs> Watch out for him. He's got that look in his eyes. Um, but he's got he's got a story to tell, so let's listen to what he has to say. So Kalam, you you quickly can get the water. There is like a single palm tree that's uh coming out with some rocks. This isn't the first time you guys have been into in Twinsco Gulch or Gorge or whatever I called it before. It's a common path in between. The big difference now is uh, for whatever reason, uh, the doors, uh, are, the way is open. All right, so this guy will say his name is like Foth and you guys know that he's part of the Red Hooks. He's got the symbology or the iconography that uh, shows him as one of the Red Hooks. And he basically tells the tale that just like any other time, they were on their way with the girl and uh, some kind of giant, some kind of uh, sharp-dressed giant jumped up and uh, bushwhacked him, took out all the other guards and uh, took the girl. 
pushed over the wagon, smashed it. Yeah. Macedonian Cyclops uh, strolled out and grabbed this girl. So uh, if we want to get her back, I mean, it's obvious where they went. We should probably check it out. What do you want to do with this guy? Uh, he can crawl back to to his comrades. And he happily does so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I want him to steal our horses. That was, the, that was the only thing. The camera pans as he's <laughs> going away. You can see like he's got a smashed leg that he's just dragging along behind him. All right. What's the plan now? Yeah, well, I think um, I think as I pass that guy, I'll just say uh, the vultures might come back. I'd be a little careful if I were you. Looks around wild-eyed for a second. And he uh, crawls out of the scene, maybe out of the whole movie. <laughs> All right, Kalam wants to head over to the uh, uh, the open doorway and the men yep. here that are... Uh, Flanking it. I'll definitely search those men here's and then the areas around the doors. All right. So when you start looking around here, uh, like I say, there's still like a path and you can see that it leads into uh, um, a stairwell that goes down. Uh, not very far, even with the sun beating down. You can dimly see in there that there's some kind of uh, cobbled or mosaic flooring that's down after the, the stairs. Uh, these two men here uh, are set diagonally against each other as opposed to their faces facing each other, which is a little different. Um, like I said, I just wrote this last night. I'm looking at the wrong page there. I'm all ears, man. I didn't put page numbers on this thing. Hmm. So um, it looks like uh, it's possible that at one time there might have been some sort of uh, runes or glyphs or something on these men here, but the tests of time have uh, worn them away. All right. Uh, are the giant footprints going inside the uh, hall? Um, if there were any footprints, they have been kind of buffed out by the bloody swath that was drugged behind them. Mm, Got gotcha. you. Uh, why don't you go ahead and make a detection check? That seems like a little tighter sort of thing. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, you don't notice anything else. <laughs> and there's no sounds coming from the doorway, from the stairs? Um, I don't think so. And you said that there looked like there had been some sort of like writing on these obelisks, right? It's possible, yeah. There are other obelisks down here as well. I don't know if you guys noticed those. Mm-hmm. Oh, there is a door. The two pieces of the door. Uh, you did. Well, I guess you didn't make any rolls, but I'll tell you. It looks like there was some sort of uh, symbology on it. Um. I think it might have been like a large uh, hummingbird is half on one of the doors and half on the other. Hummingbird. Hmm. All right. Is it a one-eyed hummingbird? No, it's just kind of like a stamped hummingbird. It's not like an art or anything like that, you know, so you only see the silhouette. And I didn't say this, but a little retroactively, I would have picked up my axe that I had oh, thrown no, earlier. too late. <laughs> 
I'm right here. I just go back down there and grab no, it. No, 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 too late. <laughs> if you don't get it within one round, it disappears like any good video game. <laughs> but then it just shows up in your pocket, so I think you're okay. All right. Anything else you guys so, want to do? Uh, I will take the butt of my spear and sort of tap it on the obelisk. All right. It thuds solidly. Some sand and pot comes off. Examine the we examine the obelisk. We examine the doors. I said I examine the area around around the doors. Mm -hmm. Didn't yep. see anything. Like we could see that there was a mosaic down downstairs, short flight of stairs. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Nope, not in this area. And it's dark down there. And there's light. Uh, oh, there there's some light from the sun. Okay, but no light emanating from below. Not that you can tell from out here. I'll tell you what I will do is I'll uh, scramble up the side of that uh, that little cliff there mm -hmm. and examine those skulls up top. I'll be right back. All right. I'll maintain watch right here by the doorway and make sure nothing comes up while All he's right. doing that. You spend a little time looking at them. You can see, like, it looks like they've been here for a very long time. Um there's like some sand that's been encrusted over them. Maybe they've been buried at different times by blowing sand. Uh, but you can also, you would, you are pretty dang sure it is made out of bone. Uh, but a very, Ooh. very thick bone from a long time ago. Uh, it's worn. And I think there might be some areas that it's been chipped and like uh, eat at Joe's. Um, <laughs> for a good time, right, well, find Levi. I'll peer, you know, I'll just peer in the thing. eye socket. And look, look, look underneath, and just kind of just peer around to see if anybody shoved anything in those eye sockets, the nose, or underneath where the <laughs> mouth is. Uh, it looks like it's. If anything was ever shoved in there, it's been found, and no one has shoved anything recently into the eye sockets of the twin skulls that you can find. All right, I'll and, scramble back down. And the, looking up at those skulls, they have two eyes. They don't have one. Correct. Okay. I would say that they don't. Uh, go ahead and make a detection roll, Kalam. See what you think here. All right. This is a maybe a little more difficult. Oh, a great success! You don't think they're human skulls, but they're fairly close to human. Uh, with a leap of logic, you would say closer to, uh, and these aren't a known culture, but they are a myth, or you thought they were a myth in the past. Uh, like Northgate is supposedly built on an ancient city of elves, but no one's seen an elf in thousands of years. Uh, mm. But by all the stories you've heard before, you would guess these are dwarven skulls. These are big dwarves. Giant dwarven skulls. That's <laughs> that's that's way weir weirder than Nethys or Neth. That's all right. Like the, it's like the dwarf in the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It is. Uh. All right. All right. Well, yeah. I'll scramble back down. Uh, I'll say, hey, you know. You know, looks like Peter Dinklage was here. So, um, you know, long gone now. So, what do you want to do? You want to head through the doors? You what, what do you think? Yeah, let's head down. All right. Keep an eye on those uh, those steps. Is someone going to light a source of light? I thought you said the light outside illuminated it, but um, but if, not, if it goes yeah. any deeper, then it probably won't. Got you. And certainly, I'll... right. I'd like to have weapon and shield, so I will take point and head down. With Kalam behind me, I assume with the torch. Oh yes.
we lose Jason? No. I don't know. I'm, I'm doing okay. some clicking. I'm That's clicking, it. sir. Can you guys see? Yeah. So this is the short flight of stairs. It only goes down about five feet, but you can see it's these fairly large tiles almost that are down there. So how far did we descend? You said it was only... Yeah, you're kind of outside, and those are the five ones right there. Oh, this is what I wanted to tell you. Uh, the, blow, the, the wide cobbled hall is uh, uh, windswept with blown sand. And all along the walls, you can see them as you got in here, and your eyes grew more adjusted to the dim and the flickering sounds of Kalam's torch. You can see... So it's a vaulted... It's uh, about 10 feet wide, but the very tip of the of the ceiling is probably closer to 15 feet high. It kind of vaults up there, and it's made out of uh, probably sandstone, but it looks like it's buttressed and very well made and fashioned. Um, and you can see just above you, it looks like there's some kind of bass reliefs all along the wall. At about 15 or 20 feet from you, it looks like there's an alcove leading to the right, and then at about 30 feet or so, there's an alcove leading to the left. But the hall definitely uh, continues. And I think occasionally, now that you're down here and the sound of uh, the wind blowing through the gulch, you can kind of hear some sort of crunching from deeper in the hall. And then occasional uh, mumbling um, in a strange language. <laughs> Does it sound like it's coming from the right or it's difficult to, to tell from where you are, but deeper, definitely deeper from where you are. Oh, and the bas reliefs along the walls are uh, faces. Hmm. Of all ages and genders and uh, facial hair. Do the faces have two eyes? Yes. So you must be getting closer to be seeing this close. You've moved down the stairs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The only sound is your own breath in your ears and the flickering hiss of the torch. And crunching. And distant crunching, yeah. <laughs> well, you want to go check out this distant crunching? <laughs> yeah, we don't know where it's from. Let's keep going. So as you guys move forward, um, you see more and more of these uh, faces. They just line all the walls and the ceiling. And if you didn't know better, they look to be in like, like a grimace of some sort, like their eyes are hard squinted and they're made, uh, they're very, very finely crafted. And, and that's when their eyes flick open. I can just picture Kalam has got it and kind of like not looking too close, but then he accidentally like kind of looks at one closely, like maybe it's someone he almost recognizes or something. And the eyes flash open and the mouth opens in a silent scream, but you can hear the scream in your minds. All right, so you guys can do a... Uh, Make a willpower test. Oh, where is that? Oh, uh, it's so where your attributes are. There's just going to be a, it's just willpower. So you just roll the die uh, yeah. next to your actual willpower. Got it. 
two failures. Failure and a ter terrible failure. Okay, so with a terrible <laughs> failure, this guy is awesome. Callum is the best. All right, this is what I will I live for. All right, each of you guys roll a d4 and take that many points in will, in willpower damage. With a terrible success, one sixty-three. Uh, roll a d twenty, um, uh, Levi. You could roll it with dice in your in your house or. Pick a number between 1 and 20. It doesn't matter. If you can't figure out how to roll the die. We're not, we don't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. Did you mute yourself again? We still can't hear you. All right, Gabriel. Have a good night, buddy. Thanks for stopping by, brother. Yeah, your, your camera doesn't show that you're muted, but for some reason we can't hear you. Did he, did he freeze? Now he froze, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know if he can hear us, uh, but Vignal, is there anything you want to do about this situation? Oh, he, he rolled his d20 on there. Oh, a nine. All right, so... So um, this voice is screaming in your mind, and you guys can start to get used to it and try to figure, but you can see that these faces line the entire hall but not in those two alcoves and up here it looks like one of the parts of the wall is actually uh tilted a little bit so you can see that it's like one corner of it is sticking out like there's some sort of concealed door there. Um, but Levi, I want you to know that like the voices are kind of shifted to the back of your mind. You can still hear them and they're still annoying. Uh, but now you have this, you find out that one of the voices is actually your own voice. And it's saying, I grow weary of being exploited and taken advantage of all the time. This Vignal always thinks he's in charge. From now on, I give the orders around here. I'm going to type it in the chat, so hopefully uh, he'll join back up with us soon. I'm typing, guys. Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So I don't think you've seen Madness yet, have you, in this game? I haven't. Mm -mm. Interesting. So interesting. I'm going to have to get on Discord and see if he... Nope, he's not there yet. But I, I'm pretty sure he's still in roll twenty. He is. He just he just uh, put a comment in the chat. All right. Do you want to make this a stopping point? Um. I guess. I guess so. I guess we can. Um, 
I kind of have to pee. So I'm going to pee first, and then uh, hopefully you can get back on and we can uh, go over some stuff and see what you guys' next move is. Sure. So now I have to read from a book? Hey, Levi, are you here? He is. I can hear you now. <laughs> yep. You nice. got back in. Okay, I'm back in. All right. So, um, Oop, what did he just drop again? He dropped again. He just jumped back to the other room for some reason. All right, he's back oh. again. Okay. So, uh, just to tell you what happened, uh, so this game actually has his, has uh, madness, and then there's a severity of it. The just put it in the notes of your character sheet. So you basically have a moderate madness, uh, and it's going to happen about once every long rest, uh, occasional presentation, or moderate compulsion. Um, and basically, uh, the voices, they faded away. The screaming voices kind of faded. You can still hear them in the background. Uh, but one voice overcame all of those, and it took a minute, but you realized it was your own. And it was basically telling you, I grow weary of being exploited and taken advantage of all the time. Vignal is always in charge, and that should change. From now on... But I wouldn't know this. Vignal wouldn't know this, right? No, Vignal doesn't know. It's all it's all happening in uh, uh, Kalam's uh, mind. Um, I love it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's a nice wrinkle. I like it. All right, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so now you guys can withstand the voices. Um, uh, so we were, usually I wrap up at 1030 because my wife is sleeping nearby and uh, I'm not sure. supposed to go later than that. And it's 1022 here. Uh, so sorry that it took so long to get everything going, but uh, this is the yeah, time where, happens. this is the time where I usually, um, I always want to talk about like highs and lows. So if you haven't done it before. We'll give, um, We'll let uh, Robert go first. Do you have any highs and lows for the session, Robert? Uh, I, the scenario is really cool. I like that a lot. Obviously, anything that invokes... Uh, I mean, Conan the, the Destroyer, it's my favorite D&D movie because I think it's a, it's actually a really good D&D movie. Uh, I don't think great. it's a great great Conan movie, but I think it's a great D&D movie. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, I enjoy it. It's just it's a really fun uh, movie. Um, so that's cool, invoking all that sort of stuff. Obviously, the technical difficulties would be the, would be the low, but that, I mean, it's... It happens. Yeah. And the point of the highs and lows are uh, hopefully if we come up with some things that I can uh, affect, I will try to do them to make, uh, you know, to try just to be a better GM and give my players and, you know, the audience a better experience. That's what the yeah, whole some, point is. And sometimes I know people have commented on this on your videos is that sometimes we get into games discussions that people find really interesting. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. They seem to really enjoy that. I mean, I don't think my niche really is actual plays for people to see, you know, great voice acting and all of that. It's more I like to make really cool maps and uh, uh, have very uh, vivid and almost visceral description for what I do. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I really like to do. And then, you know, just have cool, fun time and get into good conversations because usually it's always gamers that are, have good conversations. So go ahead, uh, Levi, do you have any... Your camera is off, by the way, if you're okay with that. I'm oh, okay with that. Oh. 
Uh oh. Can I even figure that out? All right. Well, so here's my highs and lows. Um, really highs because um, this had a really great sword and sorcery vibe to it. Yep. Um, it, and it really comes down like the little the little things, like the little descriptions and the things that you use. Like I really like you know because you've got this a, a tomb with two, two giant skulls on top, and the gates are open, and you've got these men here's. And instead, you could have used any monster you wanted to, but you went with giant vultures, which is uh, such a refresh. It's a very refreshing. Um, I think just an interesting choice too, because like I said, you could have gone with anything in a monster manual or you know any kind of old school fantasy monster, but you went with uh, giant vultures, which again, very sword and sorcery. Um, yeah, I like uh, I like the vibe. It, like I said, it it, it does have a, a bit of a Conan the Destroyer vibe. But which which you know Robert said that it had um that, that's his favorite D and D movie. I can't help but I'll, I'll almost agree. It's like it, it's up there in my top three for sure. <laughs> for for D and D movies, uh, it's de- and I get I get roasted for this all the time. But um, it's actually my favorite Conan movie of the of the two, hmm. uh, of, the, of the two main ones. Everyone loves the first one, but I, Conan the Destroyer was the first one that I saw, and then I had to oh. go back and watch Conan the Barbarian. Okay. So going to see. Yeah, going to see it in the theater with my dad, you know, when I was like, I don't know, whatever, like eleven was mm. that. That's why it's my favorite. It would yeah. so, well, be hard to top that. Yeah. It's. Just, I mean, it's just. It's got. It's a lot. It's fun. I mean, it's got a lot of just fun parts throughout the whole thing, and it's got my favorite line. So there's the line where the princess says to Conan, she says, "Well, I suppose nothing hurts you," and he goes, only pain. "He's drunk. He's drunk," and he goes. Only pain. I love I, that. Was the line I was thinking of as soon as you as soon as you said it, man. <laughs> it's such a great line. <laughs> uh, I I mean, you know, and the, go ahead. No, I was going to say the way it, the way it ends too. With uh, he, you know, where Conan has this Jack Burton moment, you know, at the very end where you know she's she's sitting up on the throne and she's very you know very beautiful and the, you know the, he, he could have the kingdom and the riches and whatnot, but he's like, nah, I don't think so. And he right. just kind of like scrolls off. Like I said, very Jack Burton, you know, very uh, big trouble in Little China. So well, and and that Conan esque the... because there are quite a few times that Conan was offered many different things in the stories, not just Robert uh, Howard stories, but all of them. And uh, in his early days, he chose not to do those things and would rather continue his life as a yeah. you know a wanderer. Oh yeah. Did you have any lows? Yeah, that's, I mean, the my lows are my self-inflicted woes because I don't know technology for crap, and <laughs> just uh, yeah, I'm terrible at online gaming. Like, I don't know if Neon Lord is still in the uh, the chat, but good God, he'll tell you some stories, man, of me just dipping in and out because uh, of this horrible internet connection. But man, yeah, my apologies. It's that's terrible. Right. So. Um... Uh, I've had people who actually played in one of my online games, and then they like, I gotta, I gotta fix my system and get my stuff fixed because I want to be able to play in more of these. And I'm not saying you uh, are, are one of those people, but uh, if we could get together with you two together, <laughs> I would love to uh, finish finish this off, and you guys would actually get to see what's going on with the weird giant dwarves and uh, a sharp dressed cyclops. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm yeah, I would be hundred percent into that. Yep. All right, that sounds great. Um, for me, it was uh, very exciting for Levi to actually play in one of my games, other than me just playing in his. Uh, I really hope you had as much fun as I did, Levi. Um, yeah, dude. Play, Good times. In yours. Uh, can you imagine how much we would have got done in two hours at a face to face? Uh, probably not with that much more. Actually, we had a couple fight <laughs> scenes and uh, uh, some. Uh, information drops right uh, but i hope you enjoyed like the maps and seeing you know this tactile hey, experience but it also creates issues it's not just faces on a zoom call which probably would be better for your internet honestly um <laughs> well i've been wanting to uh to to play with both you guys actually for a while so we got a little chance at north texas to to play shortly but um yeah, maybe a game hole. We can all get together and um, have like an off the books game, or like join Doug Con or something, or I don't know, some, something. You know, I yeah, I almost always run uh, off the book games quite a bit at uh, at game hole actually, uh, like Kalmata or Low Fantasy Gaming or Tales of Argosa. Usually, 
I'm probably going to take We Deal in Lead this year because I uh, really love that that game as well. And I kind of have my yeah, own setting. I'm into for that. it. So uh, I guess I guess we'll wrap this up. Everyone should know that Levi does have a current um, Kickstarter going with um, uh, it's a DCC. Well, why don't you just mention it quick, Levi? You're going to have a boilerplate faster than I am. It's a collaboration with my friend uh, Laws the Eye. It's called Closet of the Eye Wizard. Uh, it's a DCC zine um, with like a killer lineup of of artists and creators. Every page is a every every spread that you open it up to is a is the merger of a of an artist with a a writer and they they have created something brand new for every page. Every page looks different. Some of them are color. Some of them are black and white. Everything's laid out different. I mean, the whole each spread is different. So it's just as much of a DCC resource as it is a art zine. This is a cool project, um, and it's up for about another I think five days. So. Um, yeah, if you, if it's if that sounds like it's up your up, up you know up your alley, then um, yeah, most definitely check it out because I I think it's super cool. But um, you know, we'll and it's see. also it's also got that super cool uh, old comics cover, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's got a great a great cover by our friend Raphael. He's uh, just he he killed it. It looks like an old EC Comics horror cover. Mm. Um, you know, like an old lab and a you know skeletal hand and the whole the whole nine yards. It's very very cool looking. Um, but yeah, but I mean, you know, there's the the range of artists that have their work in there. It's like it's like Peter Mullen, Doug Kovacs, Chris Arneson, uh, like Bruno Prosecco, like all these you know great artists. You know, sixteen different artists. And then you've got people doing the writing. It's like um, you know Jim Wampler. And Dieter Zimmerman, uh, myself, Skeeter Green, uh, Brian Shutter, our, our friend, the Neon Lord, uh, and just a, just a ton of folks, um, you know, for all of from across the indie crowd. So um, it's just a neat. I, I think it's a neat project, and there's not a whole lot a whole lot like it that's been done before. So um, something new, something fresh, something cool. Awesome. So thanks for sharing that. And uh, yeah, we'll try and get um, Robert and uh, Levi together again and finish off this little adventure that I named. Um, oh, yeah. Twist a deaf ear. I don't know if you know, it's supposed to be like turn a blind eye, but mm -hmm. that's the take. Uh, Levi's like, I'm leaving. All right, so uh, I'm going to hit the music, everyone. Thanks for joining us at Mr. Hobbs's Gamerhood. Uh, hopefully next week we will be back with the Tales of Our Gosa playtest. If not, it might just be another vignette. All right, TJ, hit it, brother. Thanks again, everyone. It's a beautiful day in the game of